A commitment is a decision to take an action and follow it to fruition, completion, or even to the end of the term. A commitment is not a promise you make to agree to something as long as it feels good or as long as it's easy or when it, as long as it doesn't require you to stretch yourself, right? Hey, this is Brains and Bobbles Live. I'm Davina Dandridge, your guide to all things savvy and sophisticated. Today, we're delving into the crucial topic of commitment. It's not just about keeping promises. It's about understanding how commitment shapes our lives. I love the phrase that says, let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. Commitment, however, goes deeper than that. Fulfilling a commitment either shows people how emotionally intelligent you are or that you have not developed confidence in certain areas of your life. I'll show you how to make commitment instead of empty promises and how your level of commitment is related to your level of emotional intelligence. Make a com making a commitment is different from making a promise. One of the ways that commitment is important is when you have contractual agreements. So yeah, okay, we know the relationship part, right? But when you make a contractual agreement, you still have an obligation to follow it through to the end, right? You, you do understand that. So when you sign up to go to work, that's a contractual agreement. You have an agreement to come in and perform a task for so many hours to get the result that your employer wants, and they'll pay you for it. That is your agreement when you work for someone or when you borrow money. You have a contractual agreement to pay that back in a certain amount of time. Or even when you buy things on time, you have an agreement to complete the payment as you said you would. So not keeping these commitments have impactful consequences, but they're only short term. The most important commitment that you can make is to you, is to yourself. You may get away with lying to other people about how you feel, about what you're going to do or what you have. But if you make promises to yourself and you choose not to see that thing through, then the upkept promise to yourself has dire emotional impact on how you see yourself. It ruins your self-esteem. And self-esteem and confidence, you got to have that in order to make any change or transformation in your life. Words are so important to how you see yourself and how we see ourselves and also to what happens in our lives because our words can tailor what we do. If you keep lying to the one person who knows you better than anyone else, you'll never have the confidence to do that big thing or anything big or change your environment because you don't believe that you can do it. You've let yourself down over and over again. And you know, you have to say the right things and you make commitments to yourself that you know you're not gonna keep as you're saying it. Like you'll say, I promise I'll stop seeing him. Now you're saying this to yourself, but you do it anyway. This is the last time I'm gonna poach a client from work, but yet you see an avenue for you to make a couple of extra dollars and you take it. Or I'm gonna try to stop eating after six o'clock and I'm gonna work out more. You have made a promise to yourself, but you haven't made a commitment to yourself. Even if you consider what you're telling yourself to be a fib or a little white lie, it has lasting impact on your emotion. Here's a commitment you can make right now. And I promise you that it will change the way you see yourself immediately. This one commitment that you make to yourself can change who you are. I want to extend a heartfelt invitation to an experience that has the power to transform your life in ways you might not even imagine. It doesn't matter if you're a busy professional, a dedicated parent, or someone who's navigating life's ups and downs. This opportunity is for you. Introducing the Emotional Reset Challenge, an immersive journey that will empower you with emotional intelligence and sophisticated empowerment, equipping you to manage your emotions so that you can curate the life that you truly desire. 
Join us in the Emotional Reset Challenge and let's embark on this transformative journey together. Secure your spot now and I'll see you there. And I promise you that it will change the way you see yourself immediately. This one commitment that you make to yourself can change who you are. Make a commitment to yourself to stop saying the first thing that comes to your mind because you haven't worked on your thoughts yet because your emotions are still all over the place because it goes, if you work on your emotions, then you will change your thinking and your thinking impacts your behavior or what you see as acceptable behavior, which then changes your environment. Making a co making and keeping a commitment is a decision that someone makes, right? It's not just lip service. You have to make a decision to do something. You'll make a commitment because you believe it's what the other person wants to hear. Or you'll make a commitment because it's convenient and it will get you out of some hot seat. And the only reason you're in that hot seat is because you didn't keep your commitment or keep your word in the first place, okay? And you will make a commitment because you can get away with not keeping your word because the other person or the person you made the commitment to is not empowered to do anything about you lying. I have a secret for you. If you are a regular violator, you already know that you lie and people tie your behavior to your character. If you are a commitment violator, that means that you make excuses when you don't want to say what you're going to do, okay? Your character says to people that you are selfish because you give lip service to save yourself, save your own behind. One of the main characteristics of a sophisticated person is that they are self-aware and they are socially aware because they understand that their behavior impacts other people. You don't believe other people will keep their word with you because they don't. They don't keep their word with you right now. You've demonstrated to the people around you your standard. And now they treat you like you've shown them. You, you can change your default response you get from people by being a person that makes a commitment and keeps it. You don't believe you are worthy of achieving the things you want in life. And that shows up in how you commit to yourself. You can let your no mean no and your yes mean yes because you know what you're capable of doing. You know, there was a time in my own life when my self-worth was weak. I used to think that I was behind the eight ball in life and that all of my friends were somehow more advanced than I was. And that was because I was comparing myself to other people. I thought that everyone else had their motivation and they had more motivation than I did. I thought, what's wrong with me? You know, how come I'm just not out here hustling and grinding like the other women I see or the woman, other women in my circle or the other women I know? Why am I not out here doing what I got to do to get where I got to go? I just didn't have it in me. I didn't feel like I was matching up to the motivation or the energy that other people were giving behind what it is that they wanted to do. I didn't think I had the hustle in me because I hadn't gone through enough in my life. And, you know, fortunately, I have gone, I went through my childhood pretty much unscathed. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but I have had issues like everybody else, but I never felt the need, like if I don't go out there and do something strange for change, stuff is not going to get done. So I figured that I just didn't have the hustle, the drive that other people had that had other backgrounds, but I was wrong. I was wrong, first of all, because I was comparing myself to someone else. Comparing yourself can send you down a rabbit hole of working at places you have no business working or engaging with people you have no business engaging with. If I give my word, then my word is my bond. That's my mom used to say. Here's the most important thing that I promised myself. I will only compare myself 
to myself of the past. That's it. I will only compare myself to myself of the past, not this person over here, not someone on television, not someone on social media. The only person that I need to compare myself is the person that I was yesterday or the person that I was last month, last quarter, uh, last year, a decade ago. What am I doing to better myself? What am I doing to see more, to have more experiences more experiences in life. What am I doing? I need to compare who I was before to where I am now. And that's going to track my success, not how I stack up to somebody who is faking in the first place or not sharing all of the information that's going on with them. You got to know that, right? That what you see about other people is just what they allow you to see. So you comparing yourself to someone else, you're not comparing yourself to a full picture. So you may as well only compare yourself to something that you know about, and that's you, okay? So motivation is all about the inner fire, not trying to meet somebody else's standard. When you tap into self-motivation, it tends to boost your commitment and keeps you laser focused on your goals. You don't get derailed or distracted by someone else's conversation. As you make a habit of only making commitments that work for you, you will begin to view your capabilities differently. You'll learn how strong you are, how, how much you can persevere, how resilient you are. You will become more trusting and more trustworthy, especially in the romantic area. If you keep your word for the small things in your romance, you are showing your mate the standard and they'll come up to the standard. Or if they don't come up to this standard, their standard is no longer your standard, then you have to make some other decisions. I'm not talking about marriage now. I'm talking about in relationships that are either not married or working their way to commitment. Where you are right now is not where you're destined to stay. You have control over that. When you start creating boundaries and reaching for more in life, some people will not want to accept the different you, the more sophisticated you. The dependable you, the you that is exploring new things, meeting new people and switching things up, they're not going to want that because they're comfortable at a certain level. And now you're moving outside of that. Some of the people in your current environment will consider you different. They'll even start throwing different terms and phrases at you to try to get you back to where you were before. Anybody talking negative about what you're doing is not someone you need in your life in the first place. So let them kick rocks. Remember, it's not just about pledges, what you pledge to other people. It's about how your commitments shape your life. Remember that. Until next time, remember, commitment is the key to a more sophisticated you. Bye-bye now.